Hi everyone and welcome to another demonstration. I hope you are as excited about this one as I am. I am a huge fan of the moon, love painting it, love giving the moon painting as a gift. So today's really going to be about using light and dark. We're literally using two colors. We're using two shades, I should say. We're using white and we're using black. We're also using a tall canvas. Um, you can actually do this painting on a tall, long canvas. You can do it on the same size canvas that we did the last time. It doesn't really matter. It's just all about effect. Um, we're going to be using um, a pencil, um, Q-tips, your sponge brush, and your paintbrush. So the first thing I'm going to get everybody to do is just draw a line between the sky and the water. All right, and of course, because it's a horizon, it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're just gonna come straight across with that line. There we go. Now, of course, you're going to paint over that, so it's okay that it's a little dark. You're going to be painting over it with um, white paint and black paint. Now, the first thing that we're going to be doing with this canvas is painting it all black. So you're going to take your sponge brush, and you're going to put a great amount of paint on it, and we're going to be going straight across your canvas with the black paint. Now, when you get to the center, just want you to come above your pencil line so you can still see your pencil line, of course, and then right below it, again, just come below the pencil line with the black and continue straight down to the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna grab my paint. Now remember, like I said uh, before, you can use any kind of container to hold your paint, old recycled plastic lids, um, paper plates, things like that you can use. All right, so let's start. Now it's black paint. So of course, because the canvas is white, you can see a little bit of white from the lines of your brush, but just keep going because with the moon in the sky, it lights up the sky. So the sky tends to be a little more gray than black. So that's okay. So we're just gonna keep going straight down to just above that line. So I like to just kind of trace it out and that way I won't go past that because what we're going to be putting here is like breakwater but of course it's not a breakwater it's the it's the light from the moon okay really simple strokes and you want to try to keep going straight across so that the whole canvas is one continuous stroke back and forth. And I know most of you are doing this flat on a table. So just turn the canvas on its side and go back and forth. Okay. So there's my sky. My sky looks pretty good. There are some light spots, but that's okay because it's gonna be easier for it to dry and it'll dry a whole lot quicker. All right, so now I'm gonna go down here to my ocean. And again, I'm just gonna trace that out. And see, what I like about this painting is it's just so simple, but yet when it's done, it's just beautiful. 
Um, and if you, like I said, if you're like me and you like the moon, it kind of speaks to you. Straight across, again, back and forth. We don't want any interruptions. Because this is dark as night, the ocean. And keep coming up to the line here, getting a little closer and closer. Okay, I'm just going to let that dry for a second. We're going to go right to the very bottom here. Go straight across. <laughs> so this here, this line here, the moon is going to be in the center of your painting. And so this line here, like I said, is going to be the reflection of the moon. So it doesn't have to be that thick. So my line right now looks to be, you know, about half a centimeter thick. You can just use a finer brush. Okay. And just bring it a little bit smaller. So, of course, on the edges... It's going to be a thinner line because, again, the moon doesn't go, the moon reflection would be thinner on the edges and bigger in the middle. Okay. Just going to even that out. Bring that in a little closer. And we're, we're actually going to go over that with, with white as well. So I noticed, you probably noticed my hand is touching the canvas up here. Well, it's almost dry because the, the, the paint is thinner on the top. Um, the more you go back and forth with the, with the strokes, with the, with the uh, foam brush, I find the canvas dries really, really fast. Okay. So, because it is dried really fast, and we know that it, you can still see some of the canvas in the back, we're just going to do another quick coat of the black, okay, because we don't want to see the white canvas. And now you have your, your uh, reflection of the moon in there, and as well, like I said, we're going to go over the middle with some white paint. Now you can probably see a big difference in your in the canvas color now at the top with the second coat because the first coat can get sucked right up by the by the canvas. Okay. Oh, I love this painting. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Okay. So that's going to dry a little. And my good old test down below is still a little damp. So I'm going to go with my foam brush with my second coat. And if you want your sky to be light, you don't have to add the second coat because again, it could be like, a re like more of a reflection of the sky. Straight across. Cover up my little handprint there. Mm. 
my some of my favorite paints to use come from um, you know some of the local the local paint stores here art stores they carry some really good paints and they carry some really great um, canvases and they put the paints on sale quite often so if you're really enjoying this and getting into it um, and you want to stock up on supplies keep an eye out for for paint sales and uh, they put brushes on and they put they put um, uh, canvases on as well as paint so you just want to even it out around the edges but you can bring the black around not all the way around because I find you'll get it on your hands but it's just enough so that your edges look a little cleaner because it is black on white and I'll show you what I mean of course you do the bottom at the very end so see just cleaning up your edges all right okay so we're just gonna let that dry and uh, a tip I like to use you can use a blow dryer um, uh, on cold setting you can fan it or you can just wait it out so if we're gonna time it rather than if you don't have a blow dryer to blow dry this painting um, the top is tacky which was six minutes um, and the bottom is still wet but that's okay because we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna work on the moon now when we work with the moon we're just using white paint and the moon, of course, isn't perfect. It's round, but you don't need to um, trace a circle or anything. You're going to use your thicker brush and you're going to make a circle. Now, the outer parts of the moon are gonna be whiter and the middle parts are gonna be grayer, but that's, that's fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around to the other side right-handed so doesn't have to be in the center of your painting but it can be you can have it off to the side now the fun part of this is that the moon isn't always perfectly white so ta-da there's your moon simple what you do is you take your smaller brush, paint on that, and you can touch up your edges. And it's okay that the um, the gray is coming, but that it's turning gray because again, the moon isn't solid white. So you can blend in with the black underneath. Oh, this is like one of my favorite paintings. All right. The man in the moon. And we're going to come back to the moon anyways. This is just all about making your shape of your moon and getting getting that getting the white on the on the black while it's still a little damp. Just forming the colors in the moon. Now, I also, I'll come back to that with my big brush again. Still has, you know, some of the white paint on it. And just blend that a little more. Just flick in your wrist, making that perfect circle. Again. It's okay that it's blended with the um, the black underneath because we're going to come back to it with white to put more white around the edges and bring more almost like a 3d effect to the moon so now that we have white on our brushes <laughs> we're going to come to the center now below is still wet because that you're looking at like I said that's going to take about 10 minutes to get from being too tacky. Um, 10 to 15 minutes. And you can like 
You can do the finger test like I do, just to check that. So, um, we're going to come to your reflection of the moon, and we're just going to start adding some white. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I like to say I have the black paint to use as an eraser afterwards to thin out the reflection of the moon. In the middle, it's going to be, it's going to come out a little more because it's more to match the moon above. But of course, because the black is still a little damp, this is gray, but it's okay. We're just making the reflection so it doesn't have to be solid white because it is at the top. Just clean off your brush a little. that water. Just add a little more white there. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry a little. Just like our moon above. What we can do in the meantime, clean off your brush and grab some black paint again. And we're gonna narrow out our edges. I'm going to clean up this area just a little bit with this Q-tip. I don't want all that white there. It's a little thick for me. And the same on this side. Okay. Just grab your tiny brush and just Thin out that reflection line. And you can go over this with another coat after. I just found that to be just a little too thick on the ends here. So I'm just gonna clean that up a little. I'm just gonna grab my sponge. We're going to time the moon drying and we'll come back to it. All right, so it's taken the moon about 10 minutes to dry because, of course, it's white on top of black on top of black. Um, so it's it's taken about 10 minutes. So now we're going to add some um, like 3D effect to the moon, of course. So the edges of our moon are going to be whiter and the center of the moon is what's going to be gray. Okay, so clean off my brush here. All right, so um, you're a little more fortunate because you're on a table. <laughs> so my back is, is not wet, it's a little tacky, but that's okay. So you're going to use your smaller brush you're going to line the edges of the moon with 
white. Ah, I hit a wet spot. That's okay. It's okay. It can be. It, it's fine. Just adding some effects to the moon. Take your time, don't rush it. I remember it's the moon, so it's not completely white, it's not completely gray. It's some shadows on it. Especially on cloudy nights. Okay, so you can just kind of bring it up from your edges. Just kind of come into the moon a little more with the white. Give it some personality. And it gets rid of that, that little bit of um, swooshing of the, um, not swooshing, I know it's, prob it's probably not the right word, but where you spun your brush to do the color the first time. So it just kind of gets rid of that. Right. So just look, just look back at it, just because I'm on top of it. Just gonna add a little more moon. Like I said, just take your time, don't rush it. You get that three dimensional moon plus shadows. Let me get rid of the paint stripping. Now I'm really going to mess with you. Still the same brush and it has white on it. You're going to dip it in your black. It's okay that you have white on it. So we'll dip it in your black a little bit. <laughs> and you're going, what? And then you're going to come back into your moon with the black. And you're going to add some more dimensions your moon kind of makes the shadows more black than gray and you're just gonna like kind of smudge into the white and a smudge and swoosh great words you're just gonna 
almost so that you rub the black out and it's kind of like smoky. So when your paintbrush runs out, just grab another little dab of black and again, just gonna kind of make the black a little smokier. Again, just on the tip of your brush because we don't want it to be black. We just want, we want it to blend with the white. I really should have my glasses on. And you're taking it out to the edges as you're making that moon pop. And there you have your moon. Okay, so your moon's done. And your moon can be any shape, design, but what's really important is to, to make the circle on top of the damp black, so it kind of gets gray, then to define the white, make a little bit of a border. And even though the center is still gray, um, it's okay to blend that white in there and then just to use your brush with a little bit of black at the tip and rub to make that smoky look on the moon. Okay, so there's our moon. What's our bottom feel like? Okay, <laughs> we still have some tacky in the bottom, which means I had a little much too much paint on my brush. So, um, I, I can tell from, from where I'm standing, my reflection is still a little damp, so I'm not going to fix that. In your kit or your, your supplies, you have, I'm going to come around here, you have um, Q-tips. So, we're going to be making um, the reflection, but we're making the reflection so it looks like stars on the water because it's a clear night there's no stars in the sky so we're making the reflection in the water okay so just using your q-tip and your white paint you're just going to make delicate 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 drops dots i said drops <laughs> okay so i like to start at the bottom and you just randomly place them When you find you have too much paint, just switch, turn it over, um, because Q-tips tend to get really fuzzy really, really fast, so you can even twist it. Okay, so closer to the top, your dots are gonna be a little smaller. Okay, random dots, random dots, random, Reflection off to the side. Okay, because it's it's like looking at a picture and seeing what the reflection looks like in the water, right? Just just there. And again, smaller cluster here. Smaller dots at the top. As you're getting closer to the re actual reflection coming from the moon, so they should almost look like they're sitting right below the moon. And they'll be tinier and they'll be more clustered together. 
and I like to almost let it thin out on my Q-tip so that there's less on the easel, on the uh, canvas, because then my stars dry faster and then I can do a little more work. Okay, so over here, we're kind of gonna match the reflection of the breakwater. And the same on the other side. Kind of looks like a lady's dress. I always find when I paint this picture. I've had people who like to flip it around. Oh, the stars. I'm like, no, it's moon. So any spots that you find are just too late. Okay, so we're just going to let that dry for a minute. And we're going to come back to it and touch up the stars. And we're going to touch up the water line. All right, so we'll let that dry. Really no time um, for the stars to dry. Oh, stars. <laughs> reflection uh, to dry in the water. So it's entirely up to you if you want to add more definition in them with your Q-tip, if you want to make them really pop. It's entirely up to you. It's a lot of work when they're, when they're smaller and they're already on there to go right back over the same spot. But if you want to, um, yeah, feel free to do it. You can just add a little more um, as well. Uh, what I also like in this part too is to take your thin brush because it is the reflection and just almost like flatten your brush when you clean it. And you can add lines in here as well. Like It doesn't have to be all dots. You can add like I said, mirroring, mirroring the, um, the reflection that's further up on your painting. You still have the starlight in the middle, but you can also have the, uh, the wave effect as well. So now I have my little brush. I'm going to fix up this white paint that, from that reflection earlier. Pop over here, right handed. And even though you've only used two colors, there's really, you really take your time with it. And it, you can just make it pop with just the black shades, I should say. Um, with just the black and the white, you can really make a painting pop with just these two shades. 
I'm just going to add some in here as well. So just lightly. Then you can just use your paintbrush to just add those little dots again on top of the dots that you already have there that are part of the reflection. back in and just stick some of my little ones up. I want them just to be a little more white. And pop a little more. A Q-tip sometimes doesn't get it to pop the way I want it. I'll just use my little brush and fix those up. And there you have your lovely moonlight, moon at night, with its reflection in the water. Really easy, just shading and um, patience. <laughs> I hope you had fun. Thanks again to Phoenix Programming to, for bringing me on and allowing me to share my favorite hobby with you.